Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? I hope you're all doing well today. So I heard you've been hunting recently and you came across this thing called a CSRF token. Let me tell you what it is, how you can hunt it. Let's get right into it, shall we? So the first thing I should tell you is what is a CSRF token? So CSRF tokens, CSRF is an attack technique that attempts to circumvent defensive techniques such as CSRF tokens. CSRF is cross-site request forgery. So you're going to forge a request from a different website than where the request is supposed to be going to. Um, say you are a website builder and you're creating a new website, you create a profile section of the website, which allows you to update your address. Now along comes a bad actor, somebody like me who has bad intentions. They analyze your requests and they are able to forge the request. So they are able to repeat the request, they are able to create their own request that resembles it. Um, and then they create their own website and they put a button on that website which will call the profile section of your website. So from their website they will call your website. Uh, and then it will update the address in the profile section. Um, they are able to do this because they're basically able, so the attacker can update the address from their own website. And it may seem pretty innocent at first. It's like, okay, it's only an address. Why would I care if the attacker can update the address? True, but let's say we're talking about a bank here and let's say we're not talking about the address update functionality. But let's say we're talking about transactions. Now the attacker can suddenly transact money from your account, from the account that's currently logged into your banking website, uh, and it can transfer it to his account possibly. That would change the matter entirely, of course. So to prevent this, you as a website builder have several options. And one of them is going to be discussed in this video and this article because there's also an article accompanying this video. You can find the article in the description below. Uh, one of the options is to implement a CSRF token. This token is an extra parameter for your request and is generated on the server. It's visible to the browser but only via the website. So that might seem a little bit abstract. What does this all mean? It means that as an attacker there is no way to gain access to the token without using some illicit tactics. We'll dig into those a little bit deeper later on. If the attacker wants to make the same request that you are making on your website but on his own website, he is missing that CSRF token because that CSRF token is generated on the server and is only visible to the browser on the website. The attacker would have to gain that CSRF token before he would be able to do a CSRF attack, of course. Um, he is missing that parameter which will not complete the request and which will return an error. Hack successfully blocked it might seem, or is it successfully blocked? Let's get right into some more details. So this is a vulnerability that you guys can test for because a CSRF token, the idea behind it is very solid but it's super easy to mess up the implementation. As pen testers, we have several options that we can test for. We can try removing the CSRF token from the request completely if a CSRF token is being generated but it's not being checked by the server. We can remove it completely and if the request is accepted, voila, we have a bug. We can try replacing the CSRF token with a completely random value, say for example CSRF token equals 1 instead of the one that's being provided for us. And if the server ac accepts our random values, of course that's also a vulnerability. We can try replacing the CSRF token with a random token of the same restraint. So say for example the CSRF token that's being generated can only be numeric and it has to be six characters long. We can try to do the same thing with our CSRF token, generate a random six character long numeric token and try to use that one. Again, if it's accepted, that should be a vulnerability. We can use a CSRF token that has been used before. So this is also an important one. 
because if ECS ref tokens aren't properly being invalidated, the attacker can just request their own token and use that token for the request. So that's also a possibility there. Now you might be wondering, can I automate this? Well, yes, I have some good news and some bad news on that front. It's possible to semi-automate this process, but for me, it's not possible to automate this fully. Why do I say this? Because any CSRef functionality that's worth anything is going to be hidden behind a login page. Anything that you can do that's not behind a login page with CSRef isn't going to be worth quite a lot, like a login page or a token page or anything that makes the request unique. So um, for a robot to go through an application functionally, it's going to be quite a lot harder for them to complete all of the requests where a user can simply do it manually. So you can manu manually go through the application real quickly, click to everything, but that won't test for CSRF tokens, of course. Now you can use any of the previously discussed techniques and you can do that in Burp Suite. You can use the free version for that. Uh, and it's called, so if you go to your proxy tab in Burp, you have an options tab. And if you scroll down a little bit, you should see a match and replace section. Depending on if the CSRF token is in the header or the body section of the request, we will need to pick one at the type um, when we select the rule. So if you click add there, you will be greeted with a pop-up window. It will ask you for the type and there you have to pick request header or body since the CSRF token is always going to be in the request that we're making. Fill in the regular expression that says match. So if you, you need to be able to find the CSRF token, of course, so look in your request, look how the CSRF token is built up and make a regular expression to always find that CSRF token. And then fill in the replace field as well and fill in the random values or one of the techniques previously discussed. Fill one of them in and replace. And I always put a comment in there because I like comments. It makes me remind myself of what I was working on. When the rule is active, click to reapplication and try to make some changes. So we discussed the previous example of creating your own website and having an address section in your profile section. Well, we can try to change our address and if we have set things up properly and the server is checking the CSRF token properly, we shouldn't be able to make that request. So when we try to save, we should get an error. If we don't get an error, one of two things might happen. We probably set up our match and replace rule incorrectly if that happens. So if you don't get an error, make sure that you have your match and replace set correctly. You can check this by going to the, um, to the proxy and then to the HTTP history. And in there, if you click on the last request, you can see the original request and the edited request. Of course, the edited request needs to contain your replaced value. Um, if you have set everything properly and if you still don't get an error message, you have to check manually. It's very important that you verify things manually. Um, and if you do notice that your CSRF attack tactic worked, you have a vulnerability on your hands. Now, I have a couple of questions for you guys. The answer will be in the, in the article below as well. Um, firstly, quickly, uh, before I forget, if you ever want to stop testing for that CSRF token, simply disable the rule by clicking the little checkbox that says enabled. So uh, the questions that I have for you guys is, do CSRF tokens have a validity? Do they expire? And can you think of other ways to steal a CSRF token? So if you know the answer to those questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'm curious to see how many of you will get this right. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye, you amazing hackers. See you later.